Hey, today I want to do an update on our recirculating aquaculture system. It's been over a year and I want to kind of go through some of the minor changes we've made as well as changes to how we manage the system. Today I'm kind of going to do a big cleanup. We just weighed fish uh, last week getting ready for uh, another a large experiment. So we wanted to get some information on the fish. I don't like to handle my fish, so that's not what we're doing today, but we're going to go through the system and I'm going to talk about some of the changes we've made. So let's get to it. The first thing we do when we come in here is we like to burp our swirl filter. Uh, this is a daily activity. We just do it, helps us remove some of the solids, and then we move those solids to our suspended growth aerobic digester. Actually, it's pretty clean. It's not that bad today. By the time we're done with it and we do it afterwards, you'll see that it's gonna be a lot dirty. So stick around. One of the minor changes we've made to our swirl filter is putting this T here uh, for the su suspension of our solids. Before we had an elbow, I don't know if you remember, uh, but basically anything that was floating on the surface could then be sucked in and moved here towards our, our uh, secondary clarifier. This way what you have is any of the stuff that's sitting on the surface will either get hung up or eventually settle down to the bottom. I mean, it doesn't readily, easily come up through the bottom of this T and then move out of the system. So it's kind of creating an additional swirl and forcing our solids down to the bottom. Uh, before I think we had a two inch pipe and now we've ex created the orifice of three inches. So a lot more water now can move up and what we see is that there's actually more water in this pipe as it's moving through the system. So we increase the volume of water uh, that is uh, moving through the system and we reduce the amounts of solids that actually get trapped in our secondary clarifier. So we still have a lot of solids, small particulates get trapped in the secondary clarifier. And that's actually a good thing. Um, basically it's designed to uh, slow down the water as it's moving through here, create additional surface area for uh, the colonizing bacteria. But what we'll find is that um, this tank here requires the most amount of maintenance. Not necessarily in our metallopads, but just because the small particulates that settle down to the bottom, that we have to remove these, um, we'll hose them down, and uh, but we do need to then uh, drain. In this case, I'll use a sump pump to uh, go to the bottom and help me remove some of those solids. I actually um, like to collect those solids when I can, and again, move them into my uh, suspended growth aerobic digestion chamber uh, over there and we to help digest in the solids. Today I don't think I'm going to spend that much time doing that for you, but I'm just going to give you an idea of what we're looking at. It's really important to keep the clarifiers, the secondary clarifier clean because the water from this tank is actually moving into the moving bed bioreactor. And one of the things that we don't want to see is clogging on our beads. When there's a lot more debris that builds up on those beads, the uh, effectivity of those uh, beads in that bioreactor goes down. So uh, that is where the magic happens. So it's really important that we capture as much of the solids in this system here as we can, because we don't want them moving into the other tank. As you can see, these are just simple metallopads. We have two different sizes. We have the larger black, uh, which is wider spacing, and then we have the green, which is the uh, next smaller spacing. Uh, what I'm going to do is keep these in place here, blocking the debris from going down the drain. So when I clean this section, um, it's reducing anything that's going into those other tanks. These actually were, were cleaned not that long ago. There's a little bit of debris on the bottom where the um, where the uh, solids have been settling. You can see um, a little bit of debris here building up from the drain, uh, but that's pretty minor. So anyway, okay, I'm gonna put the sump pump in here. I'm gonna suck this stuff out. We find that in the summertime, 
we have to clean more is because while we're heat, we're feeding uh, more uh, heavily. In the winter time, when the water temperature can get down to five degrees Celsius in this building, which is unbelievable for, uh, compared to what we are in the summer, which might be right now, we're probably around 26 degrees Celsius. So we'll actually feed heavier. And when I say heavier, we're not really feeding that heavy. Again, our system is designed to produce nutrients for my greenhouse. We're usually running uh, between 80 uh, and 100 parts per million uh, nitrates. Uh, based on our feeding. Um, we'll feed about 200 uh, uh, grams, two to 300 grams every other day to our fish tanks, our two fish tanks over here. In the winter time, we might get to less than uh, one gram. It's just the fish will tell us that it's cold and we're not eating. So um, anyway, let's get this thing cleaned up. So we'll go through a tank that looks like this, uh, extremely full of solids. You can see at the bottom there's a lot of debris um, lying on the bottom. You got a lot of floating suspended solids in the water column as you see. So anyway, we're going to get this all cleaned up and I'll show you what it looks like after the fact. One of the things that I'm capable to do in this system is that I can turn off the water to my uh, fish tanks and basically I can just recycle, recycle the water between my secondary uh, clarifier the moving bed bioreactor and our sub pump, which is right under here. Uh, normally, I don't want to keep, by the way, I don't want to keep this out of water too long uh, because it's really important that our bacteria that is colonizing this are still happy and, and healthy. So, a little bit out of the water, staying damp, great. If it's, this is going to be a long process, you know, I, um, it would be better off that I put these in another tank. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll put them in our uh, primary clarifier, that swirl filter, keep them wet so um, uh, we have healthy bacteria on our uh, metallopads. What you can see here is that I can turn this valve and open this up and the water will just swirl here between the system um, and be balanced between, uh, in, in this space. So we can just keep the water in this system uh, without any of the debris going to our, our fish tank. So I just close out the fish tanks, force all the water to the moving bed biomass. One of the things that's really nice here is that we have this nice round color on our, our beads. They're not impacted by any way. They're very clear all the way through the middle. There's nothing really in there. Uh, it looks really healthy, a lot of good bacterial growth. Uh, the mixing is really great still, uh, no dead spots, um, which is also, that mixing is also important for uh, removing any of the debris that might be, that would also build on these beads. Now, normally the tank isn't that dirty. Um, I was away, I was out of town, I was in Idaho, I wanted to kind of do a video and kind of discuss some of the components of what's going on in our recirculating system. But I think what you see here, this is why it's really important to have this secondary clarifier because the solids are being are slowing down and being captured here instead of moving into our moving bed bioreactor. So by building up solids here um, that are smaller than what's settling out in the swirl filter, this secondary clarifier is doing its job and I'm pretty happy with that. So uh, I'm okay with a, a dirty clarifier um, uh, uh, as long as my moving bed bioreactor is nice and clean. There's no debris, there's no solids in that tank, which I'm pretty happy with. So. There you go, after a few minutes, our tank is nice and clean um, and we're ready to put the metal pads uh, back in the system. So the metallic pads are back in place um, and what you can see all the way down to the bottom is nice and clean now, uh, nice clean tank. This is one of the negative aspects of IBC totes is that it's really difficult to get fish solids out of those tanks. But you know with the pump it's really not that bad, it just takes a few extra minutes and uh, every couple weeks to, to take care of that, maybe once a month. So really it just kind of depends on how much you're feeding your fish. So one of the challenges with this system, which we knew that was going to be the issue uh, because of the space uh, that we were available to us to deal with the system, is uh, plumbing with uh, 90 degree angles. You see here, there's one here, 
and there's uh, two over there, and then there's that 90 degree angle that's moving into the swirl filter. 90 degree angles are not your friend, they reduce your, slow, your flow velocity, um, and those are places that solids can build up in our system. So um, what we found was is that in fact that we did get solids building up in the system, and it's really just an easy fix for us. Um, basically what we'll do is we'll turn off one tank and open up another and um, basically all I'll do is feed um, the water pipe, uh, the hose, I'm sorry, the hose down the stand pipe and it'll help flush everything out of this pipe really easily, really quickly um, into the swirl filter. So I'm going to do that right now. So once I'm done with the first fish tank and flushing this one, I'll close the valve on, on this tank and then I'll open the valve on the second tank and then I'll put the water line in the, in the uh, stand pipe and flush any of that debris out. So it's rather simple, just once a month, but um, just a little minor change in, uh, in how we manage the system uh, to uh, optimize the solids capture. As you can see here, um, as soon as I've turned on that water, increase the flow rates, uh, you can see the bubbles and additional uh, debris that's going to be coming out of this tank, increasing the flow rates here of our swirl filter. So uh, it's doing its job. It takes us like a few, uh, just a few minutes of this on each tank, um, once a month, and uh, it's all good. Okay, now for the other tank. Turn this one off. We'll turn this one on. Full go. that back. Remember we have uh, carp in here so they will jump. Uh, so um, I don't like to have fish on the ground. That's not good animal welfare. So uh, definitely keeping your nets in place, uh, really important. Especially for fish like sturgeon or carp. Pipe in place and let's turn that on. Hey, while I'm here, let's, let's just really quickly trace the system. Uh, water moves from our fish tanks into the swirl filter, uh, which is our primary clarifier, into our, our secondary clarifier, which is the metallopans here, which then empties into our moving bed bioreactor, which then mixes back here with our, back in our sump. And then um, I normally will have this open here, which I'll do right now. There's, well, actually, I don't want to do it right now. I want maximum water flowing to my fish tank to help move into solids. But basically, any additional flow will, uh, will continue to cycle between the sump and the moving bed bioreactor. Uh, and it keeps any of the uh, reducing pressure on our pump. So because it's cleaning day, I'm going to do a uh, full clean. Uh, and you can see here uh, that there's still a little debris in the sump as we're filling up the water. So actually I'm going to uh, drain some of this water and try to remove as many of the solids out of here as I can. Um, as you can see, the water temperature in here is uh, 21. Air temperature is certainly a lot higher. So uh, I'm getting a little wet and a little dirty. So, uh, But that's okay. You know, for all of us in aquaculture, we're used to being a little wet. So uh, let's get this cleaned up. All right, now that we got that sump nice and clean, a little scrubbing, a little elbow grease, uh, we got it nice and clean. We're gonna fill this back up and we're gonna fire, fire it back on uh, when the pump is completely submerged and uh, we're ready to put water in the rest of the system. And we'll feed the fish, cover them up, and call it a day.